Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium. My name's Heliax and last time we started the game. So we made our character. He is a dumb person. He has one intelligence. Um, but pretty good in the physical departments, both in his physique and his motor skills. Uh, and average psyche. Uh, I'm loving the, the premise of the game so far. Is we're just this, it seems like a beat detective cop sort of guy. Down on his luck. Lost his memory. We we're drunk. And we we're just trying to fake it. To get through this investigation. <laughs> uh, and as we try and figure out who the hell we are. So let's go ahead and keep going. So. <clears throat> we need to go. He said we need to go around the back. Or out the door. And then there's like a front gate. Or a gate. Rather. Not a front gate. A fence. A hole in the fence. That's what we're looking for. See a container you can't open? Equip a pry bar. Good to know. All around you, rain falls on the great city of Rivershaw. Rain drips from the eaves and floods the gutters, washing the filth away. Hmm. The spring thaw must be here. The snow is melting. What am I doing? Looking up at the sky, cold water dripping from your hair. What do I see? Grey sky like great battleships. Clouds colliding with one another. Rain falls down on the world. How does it feel? Your shirt sticks to your chest. The shoulders of your disco blazer grow heavy. The cold finds its way in under your skin. You shiver and the city shivers with you. Continue. You're not dressed for this weather. You should get an overcoat or a patrol cloak. What's in the west? Sheets of rain over the water. A flight of stairs leading into the ocean. Wave after wave washing the coast of Martinez, with its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. The ruins of a half-sunken sea fort crumble on an inlet beyond the Bay of Revachol. Ghosts rise into the sky. Who are you, ghosts? What is down the shore? Run your fingers through your dampened hair. What is down the shore? Urban coastline. Rain dripping off etonite covered roofs. Cinder blocks left over from half-finished construction. A defunct research and development building. Once seized by revolutionaries. An old wooden church stands on stilts above the water. And beyond that? Coal City. End of all lines. Hmm. Who are you, ghosts? The skyscrapers of La Delta, the financial district. Faint golden light seeps from the office windows. Will you ever go there? Hmm. Will I? No, you are just one of the hundreds of thousands who watch them rise across the bay from Martinez every day. Hmm. Is that like where all the, the rich people live? Run your fingers through your dampened hair. Your hair is an oily mess flecked with ash from neighboring coal plants. Smoke stacks rise somewhere in the distance. Mm. What's to the east? There's a fleet on the corner. A plastic coat is folded into a small triangle under the counter by the window. Beyond that, the strike breakers have gathered. The great gates of the industrial harbor are locked. A chill runs down your back. You shudder like an animal trying to shake water from its hide. Clench your teeth to stop shuddering. Shake your shoulders again. Shake your shoulders again. You shudder, looking down at your feet. Dirty rainwater runs veins into the plaza snow. Two green snakeskin shoes stand at attention on the mosaic paving of the plaza. What's in the north? Capeside apartments. Tower blocks crowd one another. 4.46 millimeter bullets still lodged in their war-torn stone walls. Hallways collapse from the mortar hits of a war that was lost long ago. Clothes lines go to waste in the rain. Radios play. And closer to here? A yard. Rain falls onto the roof of a woodshed. Coal leaks into a puddle beneath a dead man's feet. He swings from a tree, bloated. 
droplets of rain slip from his cold cheeks. What's in the south? A traffic jam. Rain thrumming on the roofs of motor vehicles. Inside, drivers watch water streaming down their windshields. The statue of a king shudders. He too is cold. The canal bridge has been raised. What's on the other side? The road ascends. A raised motorway loops above the ghetto. Beneath its concrete columns, a sea of rooftops, woodwork, and tar stretches northward. Four-story buildings as far as the rain can fall. The snows melt in Jamrock. What's Jamrock? Rivershon is the capital of the world. Jamrock is the capital of Rivershon. Droplets form on your eyelashes. It's home. Where the hood? Where the hood? Where the hood at? <laughs> Why am I not there? To be in Martinez where no one goes. At the runoff point of a long forgotten canal. In the whitest part of town. In the shadow of the day the revolution failed. Hmm. What am I doing here? Standing in the rain. Looking north, where Jamrock Rock City stretches inland. Shudder. Look further. In the rain-swept distance, above the rooftops of Jamrock, a repurposed silk mill stands perched above the motorway exit. Precinct 41 hunches in the rain. Satellite officer Jean Vichmer rushes down the precinct stairs, umbrella in hand. It's unopened. He doesn't seem pleased about the spring rain. Hmm. On the bridge, officers Torson and McLean are standing guard. Torson wears jeans and a fishnet wife beater. Satellite officer Vic Mir passes by, and the young man remarks to him, Where's your homo, homie? What? It's not like that. They're what is called heterosexual life partners. They have a battle-tested relationship. A a blood bond, if you will. Huh? Yeah. He opens his umbrella, but the wind immediately turns it inside out. Hetero. Sexual. Life. Partners. Funny apery. Male-centric workplace humor. Have you seen him? Is there something wrong? No, nothing. It's just... Judith went to his place and found the Monday mail unopened. I think he's still there. You didn't like. Drink with him over the weekend, did you? That would be irresponsible. With that animal? Never again, man. What is he, still down there? In, you know, south of the interchange? The... what was it? In Martinez. He's in Martinez. Your vision blurs. You wipe your face with your hand. Hmm. Rain stings your eyes, making you look up and blink. So those are my my bros. Uh, what's above? Coalition hero statics hang like apparitions under the cloud cover. Way up there, where rain forms, rotors flutter silently. Your sight clears. And what's below? Collapsed storm drains, old sewage systems flooded with rainwater. Hidden weapon caches from the revolution. Doors leading down to Leroyam, the catacombs to which, for three centuries, they delivered the blue-blooded dead. Hmm. Motherfucker. Finish thought. This rain will not let up anytime soon. You should get a raincoat. There's a freight to the east. They sell them there. Thank you. I guess we'll go get a, a raincoat first, or maybe go and get... What do we do first? <laughs> Um, I guess we'll go look at the body first. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. Hmm. What kind of vehicle drove through here? Hard to say. Your vision is blurred and you're having difficulty concentrating thanks to your relentless hangover. Ah, yes. Why am I looking at this? Cop habit. You look at everything. Let's try it. No, these tracks are not interesting at all. Let the street sweeper just sweep them away. All right, not now.
Oh, right click highlights everything too. That's cool. Hello? Kuno's got this. The boy throwing rocks at the body can't be older than 12. Oh yeah, not a comfy Kuno. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was the other kid behind the fence. Hey kid, a word. Police business. Police business. Moment of your time, please. I'm not letting I'm not getting into this right now. Hey kid, a word. Please business. Right in the dick, Kuno. Get him right in the dick. The children ignore you. Loving in the dick. <laughs> what? The boy is sweating profusely. His eyes are like two black holes and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. Um Hmm. Hold on. What does that mean? <laughs> Stop throwing rocks at my crime scene. Stop using slurs at my crime scene. That's not how we do it. Can't talk, pig. Shit's coming up strong. Throwing rocks. Shit coming up strong. That sounds good. Joyous. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit is all about. <laughs> Juicy what now? I mean drugs. The kids on drugs. Yeah, Kuno, ride the lightning, Kuno. I want to ride the lightning. Kuno's riding it, see. He wipes sweat from his brow and sends another rock flying. The rake, Kuno. He should throw the rake at him, Kuno. The fuck does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno's not a gardener. Kim, what should we do? Are you kids siblings? The fuck are you talking about? He throws another rock. He's calling us f***ed, Kuno. He says we're fucking each other. My god, the language on these kids. It's too real. <laughs> uh, kid, you want to hang out? I'm not a narc. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, look, I have questions for you. All right. Entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me. The kid moves his hands like a basketball player dribbling fast. The body. What do you know about it? Shitload pig. What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. This is where you quickly ask him questions. Real cop questions. Like a cop. Do you know who he was? Kuno's fuck imp. Kuno uses the fuck imp for target practice. He could have just said he doesn't know. He could have just said you don't know. No. Okay. Yeah, it's fucking okay. Gotta have a gimp for rock practice. Don't ask the pigs for permission, Kuno. Don't ask the pigs for shit. Do you know how it got up there? Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. So you didn't see it happen? You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. He pulls himself up. Okay. Where did you go then? I don't know. Some fucking... He looks around, trying to come up with something. Mesk or, or... I don't know. Some other place. Night City. Kuno is in fucking Night City. Where is Night City? Kuno gives this info out on a need-to-know basis. And you don't need to know. Kuno didn't smoke the gimp, if that's what you meant. He draws snot up his nose. Have you seen anyone suspicious around? Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno. My goodness. Uh, more on this later. Right now, let's talk about something else. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost, f I wonder if that's like a... Do I have like a profanity filter on? I don't know if I want to turn it on because I don't want that word really to be said, but... Um... Uh, I'd like to discuss the body with you again, Kuno, about the crime scenes. You kids often play in this yard? I gotta ask, who is Kuno? Kuno's Kuno, pig? The boy points to his chest with both thumbs. Kuno. Primal. Violent. Kuno. Sounds like something you'd call a rabbit dog. So you refer yourself to so you refer to yourself in the third person? Kuno, is that some kind of gang name? Got it, I had other questions. Sounds like somebody you call a rabid dog. Yeah, think about it. Think about that rabid Kuno shit. Watch out, Kuno, he's trying to fiddle you. He's gonna put his hands on you. 
The thing behind the fence starts squealing shrill and violent like a fire alarm. The sound gets louder, louder as the child shouts at the windows overlooking the yard. Help! He's got the Kuno! Help! Everyone can hear. Do you need to get the hell out of here before? Just answer the questions. Help! He's digging his dick out! Escalate, Kuno! His dick is out! You're afraid! Pigs are there in Kuno! Somebody, please! Shut him down. Uh... Don't punch him, it's a bad idea. What is this sick charade? No! <laughs> Get off Kuno, you sick fat fuck! The boy screams, his freckled face contorted in hideous and containable laughter. Put you up to this. You know what? Kuno's doing this because he likes it, pig. This is where Kuno establishes dominance over you. Someone put you up to this. You put him up to this yourself when you decided to talk to him in the first place. Listen to your friend. <sighs> Kuno hawks a loogie on the ground. The phlegm is yellowish and bubbling somehow. The Gart put you up to this. Kuno owns the fat ass. Help! The RCM is trying to fuck Kuno! Are you high right now? Help! Misters, help! He prances around, eyes bulging out of their socket, rolling hard, yelling at the windows. Rolling super hard. He's flashing Kuno! He's showing his genitals! If you don't help Kuno now, it'll be too late! Mm. <laughs> did, we, did we try to punch the kid? That's probably not a good idea, huh? didn't shut him down. Your fat fist didn't meet its target. Instead, it pulled you down with it. Say nothing. Try to hold it together. Pig's trying not to cry. Kuno can't believe this shit. Can no one stop the Kuno? It's like he's now realizes he has the superpower. He has superpowers. Pig, Kuno thought you had this. What happened? Kuno can't do anything now. He's writhing with joy, like the power you gave him is too much to take. Fucked your shoulder, fucked your knee, fucked your fat body up. Stop laughing. Kim, help me up. Yeah, I deserve this. Someone call an ambulance. I think I really hurt myself. Yeah, I deserve this. Yeah, you deserve this. Trying to show your dick to Kuno. Kuno was scared. Do you have any idea of the shit you just got yourself into, kid? Let's see what this does. I don't know. We gotta, we gotta establish dominance. <laughs> we, we're the adult here. Kuno's just gonna beat the shit out of you again. He's clearly still in awe of himself right now. I told you not to tempt such forces. You didn't tell me shit. The annoyance in his face, in his voice, is directed at you, not the gremlins. Now, how about we go and do something worth the public's time? Fine. <laughs> Smells like spoiled meat and curdled dairy. A human being decomposes. Alright. Take a look at the body. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. Look down. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. Hmm. Man, we suck, don't we? <laughs> I like everything. Uh, God, what is that? Why is it so bad? Active decay. It's okay to throw up with his arm. No one is judging. The lieutenant raises a white piece of linen to his nose. He's about to blow! Cock's gonna blow, Kuno! Uh, let go of your nose without throwing up. We can do it, come on! The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth, 
more instant and more familiar than anything you'd expected. More fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you from within. Let it out. Beautiful. You feel a great force ringing from your stomach. Your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst, until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. The smell of Commodore Red rises from the pool. Among it, distilled spirit and bits of shish kebab. Fucking corpse. Keep it. The lieutenant hands you a blue checkered handkerchief. Thanks. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. You think ammonia will help? Okay, where do we get ammonia from? There is Frit nearby, east of the hostel. They usually have a small apothecary. If they don't... He points to the greenhouse. There's a greenhouse here, and a gardener with a wheelbarrow on the corner of the whirling in rags. If she works here, she might have something for the smell. Acquiring ammonia will provide a modifier to the wipe check. Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them. Okay. Turn away. All right. We'll be right back. Let's go get uh I guess we can look at this. Look at some of these things before we leave. There are several footprints in the mud left by work boots. Anywhere from 6 to 12 pairs have walked here. What kind of boots? Heavy workers boots with reinforced toes and hobnails all over the yard. Visual calculus. Get an exact count. What do you think you are? A super detective? You're hungover. These are just dents in the mud. No pattern emerges for the time being. Leave. Uh, probably need to... Do that, huh? Might as well do this too. Okay. The kid's ladder is rickety, but still climbable. Someone's trying to grow herbs in this greenhouse. So got a little crate there. This wrench me mechanism has been oxidizing for some years. Money and magnesium. Good. Take the magnesium right away. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material eat tonight. What is this? It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. Why am I looking at this pile of the roof pile of the roofing material? Let's let's fix our hangover. Maybe that'll make it easier for to easier for us to pass these checks. So he said it was to the east of this place. So let's head on out of here. Get a raincoat and some am uh, ammonia. Is that what he said it was? A heap of snow smelt. The snow melts in the wheelbarrow. The street sign reads, Fuck the police. Oh boy. The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? The young woman looks up at you. You sound surprised. We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. I have some questions for you. Of course. What can I help you with? My partner told me you may have some ammonia. Can I have some? Sure. I'm done with it. She takes a small capsule out of her breast pocket and hands it to you. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. What is this fuck, po fuck the police business? Excuse me? She doesn't understand. She's uncomfortable. Maybe you should drop this line of questioning. And the street sign says, fuck the police. Oh. Well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. It's alright, I didn't mean to startle you. Okay. She replies, shoulders relaxing. We need directions. Since the street sign's messed up? She okay. nods. What do you need? Where am I? What do you mean? I'm a bit disoriented. This is Ravishal, right? Yes, sir. District of Martinez. 
She looks around. This intersection is called Roundabout North. She looks around thinking what else to say. He knows where we are. He just wants directions. The lieutenant seems uncomfortable with the level of disorientation you are displaying. Uh, what is up to, what is up in the north? There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements. Not a lot, really. What about east? The harbor gates. Some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store, too. She shrugs. What's in the south? Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. What is on the other side of the canal? Just coast. There's a little fishing village there and a fish market. But that got closed down ages ago. Rows of stalls under a broad roof where silvery fish were heaped on newspapers. Water, water everywhere, pouring from the heavens in the shadow of the old church. Kind of forget what shiver is. <laughs> Shivers. Um, is that just like instinct or something? I don't know. Uh, what kind of fish market is this? I don't know. The abandoned kind? It used to gather every spring, but there's nothing to do there now. Just drug addicts. What's in the west? It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. Thanks. That's all for now. No problem. She nods, brushing a fleck of soil off her cheek. She's very well composed. Back straight. Good. I have to run. Of course. I won't hold you back. She wipes her brow with the canary yellow glove. If there's a corpse, then you're going to need those gloves for the autopsy. Uh, one more thing. Can I borrow your gloves? Sure. Keep them. I have another pair. She hands you the rubber gloves with no visible annoyance. Thank you. Oh, she's nice. I just throw these on now. There we go. There we go. I'm looking good now. Where's your car? Is this the cop car? What an interesting looking vehicle. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. Open the door. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. A scent of leatherwork and heavy fuel oils washes over you. Uh, pick up the radio. The frequency tableau lights up, and a green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens. Radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. <laughs> Come in, dispatch. Come in, dispatch. Come in, Delta 10. This is Firewalker copy. <laughs> Hi, Alice. This is off this is the officer from forty from the forty first precinct speaking. Nice to meet you. Come in, Delta 10. This is Firewalker copy. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? You could swear she was friendlier with the lieutenant. Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. You wonder what the lieutenant's default radio station is. You know, Alice impressed the labeled saved. Uh, I'm done with the radio for now. I need you to connect me to a civilian. Sylvie, she may have reported a murder. Could you connect me to the 30, 41st precinct? I have something I need to report. Just a second, officer. She puts you on hold, the static crackling softly like a bonfire. After a while, you hear an old man greet you from the radio. His rat ratly voice is oddly familiar. 10 2, 10 5. This is 41st uh, coming over. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking, with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. 
In front of him is a box-shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas. The radio switchboard. Hi, this is me here. I work at your station. Then four, what's your status? Over. Uh, my status? I, uh... 10, 18, 10, 20, over. Can you repeat that? Uh, uh, can you repeat that? 10, 18, 10, 20, over. Uh, please just talk human to me. Uh, these numbers mean nothing to me. State your message, sir. Over. Um, this might sound odd, but there's a pers but there's personal details I'd like to discuss. I'm in dire need of financial assistance. I'm in dire need of financial assistance. Then for I hear you. I don't have the authority to grant your request, but... Is it him? What does he want? A dry voice asks in the background. He says he needs money. Don't give that asshole anything. He's just gonna drink it all. No, I won't. Right. That's a negative on the additional funds, sir. Over. It is paramount to the investigation that you grant me more money. Please, I'm begging you here. I don't have a place to sleep tonight. <laughs> he says he's in trouble. Doesn't have a place to sleep. Well, I guess he'd better crack the case before sundown then. Uh, Vigmar said... <laughs> it is paramount to the investigation that you grant me more money. A red scent. You can tell him that. Request denied, sir. Over. Nothing is working. Okay, I heard you. No funds. Anything else, sir? Over. And uh, <clears throat> I need to report my badge missing. But you said. Then size goes. Never mind. Oh, go wide. He shakes his head. Ten nine. Repeat message. Over. My badge. I can't find it anywhere. Basically, it's gone. Message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 1022 the captain. Over. 1022 the captain. This sounds bad. Uh oh. Bad and scary. Like being called to the headmaster's office in school. Any other good news? He's saying he lost his badge. He what? He lost his badge? Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. He says, fighting off laughter. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. Come on, operator. Tell them to stop. This is serious. <laughs> Officer has lost his badge. <laughs> like I'm the first cop to ever misplace a badge. Can't we just move on? I want to get <laughs> I wanted to get it reported and be done with it. Uh I think we'd go with number three. Ten four, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge over. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost his badge! What's going on? Supercop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Could you all please just stop saying he lost his badge for a moment? Enough of this now. I have another. I have other things to discuss. Yeah, could you all please just stop saying he lost his badge for a moment? He asked you to please stop saying he lost his badge. Why? Did he find it? The room at the other end of the line erupts into volcanic laughter. Sergeant Parson was wondering if you found your badge yet. Over. Um, you don't have a comeback. Sorry. It's hard to think like this. Reaction speed's failure, say nothing. He's not replying. Looks like he's still looking for it. You can hear laughter in the background. Enough with this now. I have other things to discuss. Ten nine, come again. I didn't get that. Over. The animated conversation in the back is making it difficult difficult for him to hear you. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun too. I have a gun? Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost your gun too. Oh shit. Check your pockets. Check your... Holy fuck. You don't know where it is, do you? Uh... Oh god. It's not here. Okay, it's gone. Your gun is most definitely gone. 10-9, come in officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. Say nothing. 
Ten you're breaking up. Ten nine, repeat, please. Over. Don't say anything. Ten nine, come in, officer. Over. Remain <laughs> silent with terror. Ah, <laughs> uh, convinced him you didn't lose your gun. Even before you can get the words out, everything gets scrambled in your brain. Of course, I didn't lose my fun, my gun. Fuck it, I didn't lose my gun. He says he didn't lose his gun. Or his fun, whatever that means. Ask him to describe it. His gun. Not his fun. Just the gun will do. <laughs> These guys are assholes. <laughs> Satellite officer McLean requests a description of your weapon. Over. The fuck do you need a gun for? Look at the pythons on your arms. <laughs> you are a gun. The biggest one in the world. Oh. Request a description, huh? We'll give him one. Describe the plasma gun. For starters, it's massive. Got flared cooling vents along the front and a hydrogen flasks sticking out too. This was Kim, what are you packing? It's a gun, what can I say? Regular goddamn murder weapon. You know how they are. Bang bang. Trick question, I'm a martial artist. My entire body is one big gun. Look, I don't have it, alright? I don't have my gun. Kim, what are you packing? It's a single shot kill A9. An armistice, to be precise. Uh, it's a single shot armistice, KLA 9. Over. Says it's a kill uh, 9 millimeters armistice. Armistice? What? Is he a fucking. Clearly, he doesn't have his villier anymore. Dear God, he lost his gun? Oh, oh my, I can't. <laughs> the man succumbs to the laughter again. This isn't really a laughing matter. Mac can face a giant of Coco Nur by himself, but this go here made him piss his pants. <laughs> oh, I, I can't fuck. He lost his ass. He still got his wiener. I'm not going to ask him. Oh. Sergeant Dorson here is wondering if you are still in possession of your genitalia. Over. Now is a good time to say fuck and ass and so on. That'll make this all right. Yes, I lost my wiener too. Just lay off, okay? I left it at the moment. <laughs> I left it at his mama's after I fucked her ass all night. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I don't need to listen to this. Firewalker out. <laughs> we gotta go number two. That's a negative. I'm not going to say that. Over. What's he saying? Share with the class. He, uh, so he said he sort of made your mother. The prick ate Mama's vanilla waffles at the captain's birthday party. Some nerve he's got. <laughs> sure, vanilla waffles were the only thing he ate? Shut up, Chester. This isn't funny. This is my mom we're talking about. Tell him to apologize right now. <clears throat> Sergeant Dorson requests that you apologize for the claims that you made about his mother. Over. These conversations in this game are, are, are amazing. Okay, tell him I'm sorry. It was just banter. I thought I thought that's what cops do. <laughs> hey, if you don't like the fallout, maybe don't fuck with the firewalker. Mac, like he says uh, you shouldn't have antagonized the firewalker in the first place. Huh? <laughs> the disbelief in, in Vic Mars' fit voice is overwhelming. Satellite officer V. Fire walker. I'm afraid he might be referring to himself as Firewater, sir. No, no. <laughs> Firewater? He's lost it. Fuck it. Tell him to find his goddamn badge and gun. That's the only thing that matters. Satellite officer. I heard him, and I'm on it. Then for affirmative, officer is in pursuit of his firearm. Oh god, I. The, ah. the man's fighting back tears. Officer, do you need further assistance? Over. This might sound odd, but there's personal details I'd like to discuss. Uh, okay, then four, sir. I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. What's there to think about? You're going to be looking at a straitjacket if you tell everyone you lost your memory. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. Ten four, sir. I'm not hearing your question. Hold on. Are you alone in the room? I need some confidential information about myself. I wanted to know if you got my badge description right in your report. Can you read it to me? Name, rank, date of birth. 
I'm looking for my address. I don't know where I live. Please refer to me with my full name in the future. Any news about my, um, family? Have I ever told you about my life before the RCM? Hold on, are you there alone? That's a negative, sir. I got a 10-12 here. Over. Mm -hmm. Have I ever told you about my life before the RCM? 10-4, well, that's, uh... Does he actually want something, or is he hell-bent on disrupting our work? He asked if he ever told me about his days before joining the RCM. For God's sake, cut this shit out! Tell him to stop wasting time and be a goddamn policeman for a change. Sir, satellite officer Vikmar says... I heard him. So, um, was there anything else? Any news about my, um, family? Ten... Um... Excuse me, sir. Over. You probably don't want to continue on this road. And uh, nothing, never mind. Come again, sir. I didn't get that. Ten nine, over. Please refer to me with my full name in the future. Ten nine, repeat message. I didn't get that, sir. Over. Stop calling me sir and just use my real goddamn name, will you? Uh, what? What is it? What can he possibly still want from us? He seems intoxicated and keeps asking me to call him by his name. Mullen's drunk and emotionally aggressive. That's new. Wrap it up. Don't indulge in his drunken energy. No, I'm not drunk. <laughs> What's my name? Uh. These two things are going to really tip him off that I'm, you know, <laughs> not stable. Yeah, let's wrap this up. Understood, sir. Over. That's all for now. Roger that. Uh, ten, ten. Over and out. Uh, pick up the radio again. This is precinct 57. How may I assist you? Alice, this, this is Firewalker. Reconnect me to the 41st. I need you to connect me to a civilian, a S Sylvie. She may have reported a murder. Of course. What is the number, officer? Kim. Didn't it give... Kim, didn't it give you Sylvie's number? Yes, hold on. Her number is 005-1944-298. Received. Hold on, officer. Uh, wait patiently. Lieutenant Kitsuragi slowly begins to tap a little rhythm with his right foot. Quite a lot of time has passed. Officer, I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Yes, hello? A female voice greets you through static. It sounds like she's a mi she's million miles away from here. Hello, this is the police calling. I have some questions for you about your last days at work. Sylvie, I believe we've met before. This is me, a detective from the Whirling, Whirling in Rags. I do for you. She recognizes your voice almost immediately. There is no resentment in her tone. She wants you to ask her out. No question about it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You quit your job at the Whirling. At the Whirling, why? Was it you who called the police? Have you seen my badge? Have you seen my gun? Hey, do you want to grab a cup of coffee with me sometime? Uh, you quit your job at, your job at the Whirling, why? You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. You can hear her tense up on the other side. Wait, why aren't you comfortable discussing it with me? I, uh, that's to say I left because I needed to get away from someone. Away from whom? You know whom. I, I do. <laughs> uh, all right, I won't push you on this. Are you ever coming back to work? Maybe, I don't know. I just know I have to take some time off right now. She seems to relax a bit. Was it you who called the police? No, not me. But why didn't you call? Didn't a course behind your workplace bother you? Do you know who made the call? No, sorry. I don't. <clears throat> not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the Union's phone, or the one on the coast. It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you call? What? Of course it bothered me. But I thought the Union already knew about the court. Hmm. I mean, it does. You should have called the police. 
Um, what does this union have to do with anything? No one calls the police. The union would get angry. You can hear her adjust the receiver in her hand. What do you mean by that? You know, what the union says goes. People listen to them and they take care of their own, which is like everyone here. Hmm. I am the authority around here. Looks like there's a limit to my authority then. Tell me why exactly did you let a corpse hang in your own backyard for weeks instead of calling us? Uh, Kim, is she speaking the truth? The union is law around here? Legally, no. In reality, yes. Martinez is de facto policed by the dock workers union. He looks around. Words are not necessary to feel the lieutenant's discontent for the situation. Hmm. Looks like there's a limit to my authority then. Mm-hmm. Tell me why exactly didn't you let a co did you let a corpse hang in your own backyard for weeks instead of calling us? Uh, I see. Maybe there's something else you can tell us tell me about. I don't know what to tell you, officer. I didn't call you because I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. With the union. I'm sorry about that. It's okay. Next question. Yeah, go on. Have you seen my badge? Yes, I know who you are. You're a police officer. The law. Wait, how did you first learn I'm a police officer? You, you told me back in the whirling. You told everybody. And so does your badge. I don't need to hear about it anymore. My badge is missing. Have you seen it anywhere? Oh. No. I haven't. Sorry. Real police were never uniforms too, by the way. Where's yours? Not my uniform too. God, I should really look into that. Kim doesn't have a uniform, and he seems real to me. <laughs> I'm going to let it slide. I don't need an to answer it. I don't need answers for every little thing. Kim doesn't have a uniform. He's in plain clothes, voluntarily. It's different from not knowing where your uniform is. There are officers who wear the signature Perseus black uniforms to the highest ranks in the RCM and end up buried in them as well. Others do it more casually. Looks like you're one of them. Looks like it. Have you seen my gun? Not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. She sounds beyond exasperated. I showed you my gun? When did that happen? You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating, and... She stops hesitantly, not sure if she should continue. Sounds like it's going to be bad. Do you really want to know? What did I do? You were waving it around in everyone's face, begging them to describe it. You said it calms you, and then you started making suicide jokes. It, it got pretty graphic. <laughs> my, my character is a mess, holy crap. People tried to back away from you, or even slip out of the door. But you screamed. I am the goddamned law, and you have to listen to me. You are all suspects in a murder investigation. I should have killed myself. Why would I threaten to kill myself? I mean, look at this world. I would love to stay. Okay. I don't know what to say. Yes, but what happened to my gun? I don't know what to say. Me neither. What happened to my gun? No idea. All I know is next to her waving around money instead. Saying things like, big bucks cannot lie, and guns can't buy money, but money can always buy guns. It almost looked like you pawned it, but believe me, I did not ask. Hmm. Have you seen my policeman uniform? <laughs> uniform? I, I never saw you in any uniform. You had your things on. The disco things. Disco things? <clears throat> Do you want to ask her out? She seems like she seems like a nice girl. I don't know if I have family though, so we're not gonna do that. <laughs> I think I got everything I need. Thanks. I do hope so. Please don't call me again. Bye. Wait, why does she seem angry with you? No, she doesn't have a problem with you. It must be someone else she's angry about. Some other guy, like God. Uh, okay. But I'm a guy. Sure it isn't about me? Trust me. You wouldn't want to be the guy here. You know how it is. Yak, 
Yeah. Meg, Meg. No. You're the guy. Your Lieutenant Love. Which <laughs> make her extraordinaire. Help the poor girl out. Lest she turns into a spinster. Oh my god, not a spinster. Yeah, she's a woman. Probably just playing hardball with the goods. Women are just transactional. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm happy to help, but maybe I could do without all this inter internalized misogyny. Yeah, let's get rid of that. What misogyny? I'm just telling things the way they are. Can't a man be honest in his own head anymore? You have to act, Lieutenant Love. You have to calm that hysteric down. Tell it you've got everything under control. Then go and have a little boy's talk with God himself. Think you can do that, Lieutenant Love? <clears throat> to the microphone. Are you still there, kiddo? Listen, I've got everything under control. Daddy's going to take you on his lap, little darling. What the hell? <laughs> Please no, I don't want to say any of those things. Refuse the love quest, although it's wonderful. I mean, this is what's going on in my character's head. Are you still there, kiddo? Listen, I've got everything under control. No. What? I know, baby, I know. It's just that you've got that sweet woman child thing that makes men go crazy. Especially men like Gart. You and Gart, right? A little trouble under the sheets? Say no more. Papa's got this. Big Papa. Oh, this is so... Ah, oh, Jesus. I know, baby. I know. Oh, oh, God. This... Please, just stay out of my life. The static appears to breathe heavily. I've got a hunch. Your love life is about to take a very pleasant turn. Give the lieutenant a knowing look. <laughs> what? What is it? And the lieutenant raises his eyebrow. You'll see, lieutenant. You'll see. Wink again. Call was dominated by the other party. Anything else, officer? It's on. The love quest is on. Too late, everyone. It's on. Take it to God now. Alice, this is Firewalker. No. Please connect me to Sylvie again. Ignore Alice and press the save button. As always, it's DJ Mesh and Felicio. And you're listening to Three Freaks FM. Bringing you the hottest, the nastiest, the most vulgar. A flock of seagulls takes off nearby. Startled by the roaring radio, right away, the lieutenant reaches into the cabin and turns off the radio. He's not looking at you as he says, Someone must have been messing with the radio or maybe picked up a random frequency. You wanted a prime line, right? Speed Freaks FM, huh? Oh, uh, is that what it was called? He's trying hard to act surprised. Go for it. Turn the radio back on while it's still on the Speed Freaks FM. Right, you don't want to get into this. No problem. Pick up. Ah, uh, you don't want to get... Uh, I mean, we're kind of a dick, so let's just do it. Pick up the radio again. Souped up motor carriage for one bad, bad mama's boy. For, 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 for your foot and the freaky arm. God damn it. The lieutenant moves quickly as a viper as he switches off the radio and sets it on the prime line. Then he turns to you. Look, it helps me to stay alert on long nights, okay? It's a method. I'm not some kind of speed freak or... He shakes his head, furiously sta staring at his foot. What about heavy of foot? Sure, you don't have to explain yourself. I'll just forget about it. Thank you. His eyes glide over the plaza, making sure that no one heard the sudden blast from the radio before he turns back to the cabin. This is Precinct 57. Can I connect you to someone? No, I'm done with the radio for now. 57, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Pull out the toolbox. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. He's clearly a little protective of his tools. But what can you do? Work is work. Hmm. Push in the pull-out pull box. Push in the pull-out toolbox, yeah. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers and the radio on its hook. Run your fingers over 
one of the steering levers. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch, and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. Your fingers waste no time closing around the handle. Clutch disengaged. Release the handle. Clutch drops. Right foot yearns for the familiar touch of the accelerator pedal. You have synced with the machine's mechanical circulation. Hmm. How are you, my friend? The smell of freshly treated leather, the lack of dirt and dust on the dashboard, and a neat little brush in the cup holder all seem to be whispering. I'm good, cherished and cared for in the hands of a tending owner. <laughs> Do I know how to operate this machine? You feel an uninterrupted connection to the mechanics. Wait, does it mean I know how to pilot it? After a while, you realize silence is your only answer. Do what you will with it. Release the clutch and squeeze it again. Of course it's only in your head. Of course it is. But it almost feels as if the clutch handle is gently squeezing back. Where have you been? At the bottom of the sea. What? So strange. The machine is not on the bottom of the sea at all. It's right in front of you. Well kept. Why did it say that? A dark feeling. This is going wrong. Let go of the clutch. Release the clutch handle. The handle is pulled back. Somewhere deep inside the drivetrain, the disc is mated to the flywheel again. Hmm. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Tap on the fuel preheater gauge. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch, labeled heat. There's no use pressing the heat button. It won't start without the ignition key. Alternative translation. Don't even think you can drive my MC. Kim, what are we looking at? What is this machine? This is the Coupris Kinema, my motor carriage. You can use the toolbox and the radio if you'd like. He nods at the cabin. Motor carriage, motor carriage. Something bad with the motor carriage. A dark lump rises in your throat. What is the sinking feeling I have with the words motor carriage? Nothing, nothing. It's probably nothing. Forget I brought it up. Please proceed with the carefree lollygagging. <laughs> Can we turn it on and drive somewhere? No, I'm afraid not. We have a murder case on our hands, remember? Oh, yeah, I, mean, I forgot about that. Uh, squint your eyes. Okay, but what? Is a motor carriage. A motorized vehicle, officer. I'm sure you are familiar with the concept. We've had these for nearly a century. Do all policemen in the RCM have such cool motor carriages? The Cupris motor car does provide most of our patrol vehicles, yes. But this is different. This is a sports model. I might be wrong, but this one is a sports model, right? You're right. I didn't take you for a motor car enthusiast. Do you also like tip top, detective? I'm pretty sure I like neither motor cars nor any tip tops. Uh, what's tip top? An interisolary racing series. You should definitely give it a go if you like motor carriages. It has fantastic competition. He smiles again. Look at that. Connecting with our boy. Uh, look around the cabin again. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a pull out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Close the door and leave. Cool. All right. Uh, okay. So we didn't really get any answers there. <laughs> uh, did we level up? What is? Why is this popping up? Ooh. Oh wait. Oh, we can level up our electrochemistry more, or we can level up something else. I assume. Does it say how many like points we have? Skill points. That's probably what that is, right? I think I want to get my composure up. I think we're going to focus on composure. I don't know how many we should be focusing on. Maybe we should only be focusing on one. This is the hair on your neck. Tune into the city. Let the body take control. Threaten people. I don't know. There's a lot of good things in here. Maybe this wasn't the right thing to pick. <laughs> I don't know. I do want him to be, uh, you know, 
sort of a, a druggy alcoholic. But I don't know. I think we're gonna get one in composure. Or oh, is this one so low? Bonus from items. Sneak under their noses. Stun with immense panache. Okay. Um. What is the the plus one here from? Does it say? No. Yeah, let's go ahead and get composure. How do I save that? Do I just... Okay. Yeah, we just leave it. That levels it up. Okay, cool. Uh, inspect victim's body. Get ammonia. We got that. Who made the call? Keep searching for the caller despite lacking any obvious leads. This might take some time. Track down your badge. It is unclear how you should... should go about finding a tiny piece of plastic in a world as huge as this. Maybe you'll just stumble across it down the line. Miracles happen. Track down your gun. Well, someone must know something about your lost firearm. Maybe a district authority like someone high up in the Union or someone local who saw you with it before you passed out. The whirling, the whirling's absent bartender. You could also ask the local pawn shop. Talk to Gart Lieutenant Love. Guard plus Sylvie equals question mark? Something's going on here. You need to help a brother out with his love woes. Go to Gart and give him some solid advice. Tell him how it is with women. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my goodness. Okay. Also got maps here. Map information incomplete. Okay. Alright, well that is where we're going to end this episode, guys. In the next one, we'll probably return to the body, I think. Uh, and see what we can find now that we got the gloves and the ammonia. Uh, but until then, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you later.